For over a hundred years, humanity has imagined a computer that's as easy to interact with as a person. ChatGPT introduced the world to this technology and became the fastest growing consumer application of all time. Now, corporations around the world have started building closed source, artificially intelligent devices. Six weeks ago, we realized there was an opportunity to build an open source foundation for this next generation of computers, the Linux of this space. Something open, flexible, and free. An operating system with a language model at the center of it. I'm holding the first device powered by this operating system in my hand right now. It's called. This is the O1 Lite, the first open source language model computer. You talk to it like a person, and it operates a computer. Look what we've uncovered. It's Giuliani showing his softer side dressed in drag in a comedy skit with Donald Trump. You know, you're really beautiful. The spoof was filmed 16 years ago when Giuliani was mayor of New York for a charity dinner, so it was all in good fun. Oh, you dirty boy, you. Oh, oh. I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist to a degree. Like, when I, I connect dots that maybe shouldn't be connected, I don't know. But certain dots, like when I see that they put every black man in the movies in a dress at some point in their career, I'll be connecting them down. Like, why all these brothers gonna wear a dress? That's happened to me. Dave Chappelle, another great comedian, said that, you know, in the industry, they tried to make him wear a dress. Have you ever ran into that with, with scripts? <laughs> and, and is that something that, you know, you wouldn't do, you know, for... for uh... I definitely haven't ran into to put on the dress. Uh, I mean, you know, you, you have to have you have to have boundaries. You have to have limits that you refuse to cross. Uh, you know, for me, I know what they are. Uh, they've yet to be challenged, so you know, I don't have to speak on them. I was asked to dribble a basketball on the talk show this morning. Like, you look said good no to doing that. it. <laughs> not that that was a dress, but I was like, no, I'm gonna look stupid. You know, at the end of the day, you got to know that you're a brand. I'm yeah. a brand. Uh, you need to protect your brand at all times. When things happen that can possibly affect your brand, your your brand can be diminished, and and you don't you don't want that to happen. So you know, protecting my brand is is definitely a priority. And here come the Cardinals, and from the looks of it, the new Pope is not Turkson. The new Pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee Kavanjane Wallace. saw this one coming. Ready or not, here comes Mama. Don't be hoodwinked. Don't be bamboozled. Don't let them run the okie doke on you. Because while they're trying to distract you with all this stuff, they're robbing you blind. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Lily Wachowski, one half of the directing duo behind The Matrix, Cloud Atlas, and Speed Racer, shared a simple tweet affirming her identity as a transgender woman. Rebecca Welch is the last of the great Hollywood goddesses. Do you think you're sexy? No. I don't N find myself even the littlest bit sexy. Really? But I can pretend. We're here to honor achievement in that category. By giving you a golden idol to worship. Kneel before your God, Babylon! I propose that we end the world, but on our terms, an orchestrated apocalypse. One that will cleanse the earth of its population, but leave its infrastructure and resources intact. It's been done once before, with great success. And when it's over, we will emerge onto a cleansed earth, one that we can then reboot in our image. And just how do you intend to achieve this? 
the means of our salvation are already at hand. I give to you the T-Virus. Emma Watson, Beauty and the Beast! First acting award in history that doesn't separate nominees based on their sex says something about how we <laughs> about how we perceive the human experience. This is very meaningful to me. Yes, of course, boys. I'll leave the front door open and you can all troop in and give me a job. Not up to it then, you innocent, shovel-wielding, horny-handed sons of the native salt. I heard about this party which happened in January 2012 and I thought well I have to go see this. I was writing a book on young Wall Street bankers at the time and I wanted to sort of see what happens to these people when they grow up and make it. Um, this group Kappa Beta Phi has some of the most successful people um, in finance and on Wall Street in it and so I wanted to go try to see so I rented a tuxedo. I, uh, I found out where and when it was and I, and I walked in and I you know nobody stopped me at the door and pretty soon I was inside this event that in 80 years of this thing's existence, uh, no one from the outside has ever seen firsthand. And I'm, I'm, look, I'm not going to defend the humor that was told at this party, but this is a, a roast atmosphere, right? I mean, what is a roast without some yeah, right. cutting it's zingers a, here and there? Right. It's, it's a roast, but the people they're roasting are not only their fellow private, you know, um, barons of industry. It's also people like Hillary Clinton, uh, Barney Frank. It's people like the Occupy Wall Street movement. And you have to remember, this was taking place in January 2012, just a couple months after the Occupy Wall Street movement had sort of risen up in, in resistance to the sort of activities of the financial titans. So this was, I mean, it's almost comically tone deaf that you would have these, uh, these same uh, titans of industry putting on drag and, and doing skits and musical numbers and, and mocking people who aren't in their group. It was, it was like the Wolf of Wall Street on steroids. <laughs> 